Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss on another topic which is on intellectual honesty and research integrity. So when we talk about research integrity, as you can see, it, it is kind of a commitment and sometime in the face of diversity to the, you know, turthworthiness of the research process by the greater scientific community and it is kind of very important, uh, even critical because the greater scientific community can only innovate and flourish when its member function together as a body to ensure the climate that can promote the confidence and trust in our research finding and moreover it should encourage a kind of free and open exchange of research material and new ideas which uh, can again afford personal and corporate accountability and also acknowledges and respect the intellectual contribution of the others in the greater community so this is this this is how it can be defined and moving further we can say about intellectual honesty when we talk about you know as you can see the picture here now also each individual have their own way of uh, uh, looking into a particular thing or perceiving and uh, reacting to a thing so when we talk about intellectual honesty it is kind of you know kind of proposing or performing and you know reporting research referred to honest with respect to the meaning of one research and it is kind of it is kind of expected that you know researcher present the, their kind of proposal or data honestly and they should communicate uh, uh, whatever you know finding they have uh, got in the process of uh, you know you know developing that work they should write it or they should communicate uh, efficiently so that it should reach to the uh, end user or to the scientific community or the, to the author or you know to the researcher whomever will be assessing that particular work so intellectual honesty is again we can say is honesty in acquisition analysis transmission of these ideas a person is kind of you know uh, intellectually honest when he or she you know knows the truth and also state that truth so this is how we can define the honesty moreover uh, this intellectual honesty when we talk about kind of in a applied manner so when we go for applied method of problem solving characterizing uh, when we talk about uh, research and performing it unbiasedly then with honest uh, with honest attitude which can uh, be demonstrated in number of different ways uh, like uh, we need to ensure uh, the support uh, or the ideologies uh, that we get and in the process of you know exploring uh, that particular work in a truthful manner then uh, the relevant fact and the information are not you know purposefully omitted even when such thing may, may contradict one hypothesis so if let's say somebody found something and uh, that is not the end result what he or she is uh, uh, expected to get but in the way to so that they have reached their you know end result if they do some kind of uh, omission or let's say you know fabrication or falsification so that will lead to research misconduct so that to be avoided and facts are presented in an unbiased manner and again it cannot it should not be twisted or can uh, it should not be misleading a kind of impression or to support one views over over another so that to be avoided and references and earlier work that need to be acknowledged or uh, that we've been we'll be discussing and we'll discuss on that uh, particular area you have to acknowledge the primary secondary or the sources which who whomever you have gone through in that process of developing that particular work or the research uh, that also will help in avoiding plagiarism again uh, when we see the four fundamental principle of research integrity the first one as you can see is reliability so it is kind of ensuring the quality of research which reflected in the design and in the process of you know when we initiate a work in the process of methodology analysis and 
the resources that we'll be using. And when we talk about honesty, it is again developing, undertaking, reviewing, reporting, and communicating the research uh, in a transparent, fair, full, and unbiased way. So that is the second component of the fundamental principle of our research integrity. And when we say respect, so it is basically we're talking about for the colleague, the research, you know, that participate or society, ecosystem, or cultural heritage, and the environment where we are talking about and giving the respect and getting the respect kind of uh, thing. And then accountability for uh, the research from, you know, ideas to publication, uh, a kind of for, uh, for management and organizing for training, uh, supervision, uh, mentoring, or let's say for kind of wider uh, impact. So if, if we say, then that's the accountability. Whatever thing that you have designed and the way, you know, longer uh, impact that will be there in the society because once it is get published or it is available at an open platform, so it will be uh, accessible to the wider community and the impact will come based on the work that you have presented. Then uh, talking on this uh, research integrity, when we talk about uh, the integrity, you know, basically that characterizes both, you know, a, a part, let, let's say if a coin has, uh, if we're talking about the individual working in an institution, so that is one aspect of it. So it has to be the individual as well as the institution. So for the institution, we can say, uh, they need to create a ecosystem or an environment where the individual can walk uh, uh, with all kind of resources and they were aware of the rule regulation which uh, being discussing uh, I have discussed in my earlier video about the uh, ethics so with respect to science and research uh, you may visit that one as well I have kept it in the i button so that is where uh, the institution have to take into play. They have to provide uh, that kind of ecosystem with uh, all the software or hardware, uh, you know. When we talk about defining research integrity, again, we can redefine it as kind of as, as active adherence to the ethical principle and professional standard, uh, you know, kind of essential for the res responsible practice of the research. So this is how we can define research integrity and then the practices that characterize, uh, you know, uh, uh, responsible for research outcomes are kind of uh, honesty and fairness in uh, kind of um, when you go or propose or uh, proposing some kind of research or performing and uh, reporting research. Then again, there has to be the accuracy and fairness uh, whenever you go for presenting your work, uh, contributing uh, to kind of a research proposal or let's say uh, drafting your final report or uh, you know your synopsis. So this is where uh, it has to come into play and then the proficiency and the fairness in peer review when we talk about any because in a scientific community uh, the process you know once uh, so if somebody is writing then it has to be peer reviewed and that is how uh, kind of uh, a platform where somebody can comment or can give critical, uh, uh, you know, uh, review comment or this suitable to, you know, um, inform uh, the participant or the author that uh, what is uh, wrong and what is right or what further can be done or, or let's say they have a um, communication platform where they can clarify uh, the process in which uh, the particular experimentation or research has been conducted. Then, then again, the interaction, communication, sharing resources, that is again another uh, practices that need to be followed when, uh, when we talk about uh, getting or, or, or reaching to you know particular outcome uh, after certain research. Then um, conflict of interest that also need to be you know disclosed. Uh, nowadays, in uh, whenever you communicate, uh, you have to disclose all this. You know whether there is any conflict of interest among the author or not. Uh, if there is any conflict of interest, then you have to state it. Then the funding uh, part also you have to disclose. Data availability also you have to disclose. And again, if you have conducted that research with human subject or animal, 
then you have to um, give a statement whether you have taken the appropriate approval ethical clearance or not and again um, uh, in the process of uh, conducting such experiment you have to take uh, appropriate care while dealing with human or let's say human animal or uh, in the process of uh, performing that experimentation or research then uh, adherence to mutual uh, responsibility uh, of mentors and training so that is also another you know good practices while performing any research to get uh, a good research uh, output or let's say a risk, uh, performing uh, uh, a research conduct so these are a few, uh, the thing thank you for watching this particular video uh, please do share like and subscribe uh, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel thank you again for watching